Dan Shaw members, welcome back. So we're into year two of our development program. <clears throat> Remember, use the uh, previous year's videos. Go back, review them. Think about other questions that you can bring up in classes, but we're going to try and move on from those sessions and introduce a few more points this year using some data, helping you understand where we're going to try and move your game onto and maybe how we can use these golf clubs a little bit more efficiently. Okay, so today it's what what is angle of attack and low point. So low point is the bottom of the arc of your golf swing. Okay. The angle of attack is the angle the golf swing is attacking down on the golf ball, whether that is down or negative or whether that is up or positive. As you can see, an up will move the low point behind the ball and a down will move the low point before the golf ball. So that as a basic understanding is where we're going to start. And we're now going to hit some shots and show you some results as to what happens with these shots. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit a shot. Have a look at some data, explain to you what that means, and we'll move on from there. Okay, so here he goes. Okay, so here's a replay of that strike. So I've hit it relatively straight, pretty much the same uh, shot as I normally play, just a little bit left for the touch of fade. We're not going to look at any of this information here. I'm not interested how far it went. I'm interested in these two numbers here, which I'm going to bring up on the screen. Angle of attack and low point. For myself, my angle of attack is somewhere between four and six degrees down at the golf ball. That is a minus figure. That meant the low point was about four or five inches ahead of the golf ball, to the left for a right-handed golfer. We can see this in this picture here. Where the angle of attack there is minus six. So essentially, the angle of attack minus six, the low point was five inches after the ball. So the low point of the swing would have been over in this position, or if you like, if the ball was struck here, the club was still descending into the low point of the golf swing. Okay, now I'm going to hit a shot with a sandwich and we'll see what if, there's, if we have any variations on what we've just seen. Okay, one thing I want you to remember about hitting a wedge shot versus an iron shot versus a long iron is that a wedge shot, the swing is narrower, okay? It is shorter like this. It's much more of a narrow base, more U-shaped at the bottom. And as we extend, as the clubs start to uh, get longer and longer, that base gets wider and wider and wider to maybe where we get a driver, which might be much more horizontal like so at the bottom. So that's something I want you to try and remember when we're referring to angle of attack. So let's look at that sound wedge. So I'll replay the shot on screen, pretty straight one. Um, my angle of attack was minus 5.3. The low point was 3.8 inches afterwards, which I'll just show here. Now that, compared to my seven iron, was actually a little bit shallower. However, what I'm not doing with my sandwich is transferring as much weight and as much energy to the left. So that is why it was a touch shallower, even though the bottom of the swing was narrower. I know this all sounds really complicated, but this is the key thing. The low point needs to happen just after the golf ball for us to get an effective contact with the golf ball. That means the ball will compress into the face, get the ball to grip the grooves, and that will give us a good flight and trajectory because we get the right amount of spin and compression to control our golf. Okay, so I'm just going to show you here where the ball would have been. So you can see that the low point is occurring here. So therefore, we are talking the ball being here on this downswing. So you can see that the wedge of cheese here, and this is a really good way to imagine it. Imagine you have a little wedge of cheese behind your golf ball and then you're going to land your club down above that wedge of cheese to get that downward strike and to get your low point left of the golf ball. So we're going to look at driver now and see how things adjust. Remember, this is going to be uh, ball position forwards. We're looking now to change this angle of attack from being so negative to something that's more horizontal, even slightly positive. Okay.
Okay, so looking at that driver, I've hit it a touch to the left on here. Angle of attack and low point. Now these have now changed. We're going to switch screen again into angle of attack, 2.4 positive. So I've hit slightly up on the ball and my low point happened just about three inches before the golf ball. So that's why it's important to have the ball position left of center, not to move your chest further left because that chest is also going to influence where the low point of your golf swing is as you swing through. If that moves left, that's going to move the low point left. So it's having the, that correlation of where your chest is set, where the ball is to, to control that angle of attack. And you'll see if we switch screens that this wedge of cheese turned into a slight positive one coming from the underside of the line which means that the ball in this instance is over here just on the ascending part of the golf swing. Okay we're just going to try and diagnose when something when a mistake happens as to where things might have moved to. So here's my handy little pointer again. If we had the T peg here here is my low point with the driver. So the T-peg would be about here so that we can be striking horizontally to slightly upwards at the golf ball. Now, if I were to shift this this way, you can maybe see now how that T-peg is starting to pop above the downswing. So those of you who sky it, look what's happening. We're traveling downwards. That ball is going to strike the crown of the club. It's going to pop up in the air, especially if we tee it too high. When I have a skyer, I quite often get them to tee the ball down for a little while, just so that we can hit the club face, and then we can start adjusting the swing back and maybe uh, introducing um, a better path. Because as you, if this is the low point, we're going to look from here. As we move that low point further left, the tendency is that that path is also going to be moving left with it. Wherever the club faces in relation to that, typically with driver, it will be a reft open to that path is going to give you the curve to the right. Conversely, we can slip the other way. So those of you who tend to hook top the driver could be on too high a tee. We could be going too far upwards because getting this club to swing too far upwards now is twisting this path way out to the right, Okay, which I'm not overly a fan of. What I like to advocate hitting driver is that the bottom of the swing is as wide as you can make it along the ground, ever so slightly up if possible. But a lot of people misunderstand up and will go like this. And now we're topping it. Now we're relying on too high a T and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. So let's think about the low base of the golf swing along the ground. Imagine a tunnel to take your club head through. That's a great visual for me. Okay, now let's try a couple of mistakes. So I'll try the first one. We're going to hit slightly downwards. And we'll maybe hit it a little high in the club face. So typically, weight's a bit too far left. A beautiful sky there. Okay, so here's the sky. It could also have easily have been a slice or a cut. So angle of attack there, minus 2.1, low point 2.6 beyond. So left of the golf ball, so we're hitting down at it. Now, that isn't too much down, by the way. You could get away with hitting a good shot from there, but I happen to have the ball in a really high tee. So if you are struggling with that shot, a fix would be to tee it down for a little while, see if you can get the contact back with the club face, because you might well have hit a half-decent shot and got it down the fairway. The fact is, I hit slightly down at it, so the ball was about here. We hit the crown of the club, and it popped up into the air. Okay, so now I'm going to show the other extreme, where the low point happens way too far, far before, and we're swinging up way too much at the golf ball. Okay. beauty of a top that was excellent okay so these are quite extreme numbers um, angle of attack 9.3 positive okay low point 10.6 inches essentially what that means is the low point happened over here how far is 10 inches over here so this is where the ball was on the tee 
Okay, so you can see how vigorously that club was climbing. And this is where sometimes people do the mistake of hitting too up at a golf ball. Okay, you will just top it, thin it, and end up having to use a six inch high tee just to hit the golf ball. So having that low point too far back is not a healthy thing for hitting this driver. Okay, so conclude the session. Hopefully we now have an understanding of where the low point should be for each club. Now we didn't mention fairway wood. I will mention fairway wood before we finish. Fairway wood's low point should be at or just after the golf ball, especially if we're hitting it off the ground. If we look at the best fairway wood players, they do take a slight divot with it. So that's something to think about. With the driver, low point before the ball if we can. The further before the ball it is, the more likely we are to hit tops and hooks and pushes. Further beyond the ball, the more likely we are to hit the skies, hit the divoted top, or hit the cut or the slice or even a pull, okay? With the iron, it's a slightly different beast. You can get away with more angles with the iron. So just keep thinking about beyond the ball with your low point if you can. This means stop trying to hit it in the air. Let the loft of the club hit it in the air. Let the club land along that wedge down under the golf ball. And you should feel that you're gonna get a strike the ball a lot crisper and you'll get a much better control of your golf ball when it hits the green.